five, four, three, two, one. This is Views in Paradise. Welcome, any and all, to Views and Paradox, episode 17. Today we will be talking Get Out with our guest, Randall Dotton. Randall is a filmmaker and the screenwriting chair at the New York Film Academy. Welcome very, welcome very warmly to the show. Hey, yes. how y'all doing? Thanks for having me. We're doing good. Hi, well. Yeah, and Rochelle, as always, is, is here as well. Hi. <laughs> I'm excited for Randall. He seems fun. We just had a little conversation before. Yeah, he's a cool we guy. Went live, we, yeah, we had like yeah, a whole recorded. conversation. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, this is part, this is part two. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 That's the, it's the warm up, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So you have the show and then the after party, you know what I'm saying? So you got to make sure, you know, you work it out. Yeah, we need some extra content for later, maybe. Let's <laughs> <laughs> do like bloopers or something. It's all good. It's gonna be good uh, fun. Yeah, I think today uh, we've been doing kind of like we've been trying something with a like a spoiler free section up front. But I think today oh. I kind of just want to say spoilers from the get go. I think it's been oh. I don't know. What, what do you think, Michelle? I think I feel you're, like it's been you're the only person that I know that has not seen this movie. <laughs> right. Oh well, yeah, it's just I meant in uh, from a format perspective, I feel like it's going to be well, well, no, better for us to just dive that. into like, it. I, yeah. Everybody's seen it. Let's just get it. It has a slow yeah. start. To so we'll say it. spoiler Let's warning on the whole film. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's good. Uh, so uh, without further ado, we'll just get into a little bit about the movie. This is directed by Jordan Peele. It made a whopping $176 million at the domestic box office, uh, almost double that worldwide, uh, on a budget of $4.5 million. So really crazy. Uh, where are the rest of my... I, I, I do this brain fart it also, business. It also won the Oscar for uh, Best Original Screenplay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, so, uh, Thank you, Rand. Yeah. And actually, it, 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 you know, the success of it, you know, relaunched Spike Lee's career because Spike Lee would not have gotten an Oscar had not Get Out been successful because, you know, essentially what happened is that uh, Black Klansman was originally sent to Jordan Peele and Jordan Peele, I believe, was in the process of getting us together, his second feature, and also doing his TV stuff. So he sent, you know, the book. Uh, to Spike, and Spike was like, I'll do it. Jordan Pill got Spike a $20 million budget, and the rest is history. So without, you know, without the success of Get Out, Jordan Peele wouldn't have had the, uh, you know, Spike Lee wouldn't have had uh, been able to, to, to get his film made, to get Black Klansman made. So it's That's just crazy. like, you know, it's deep, the ripple effect, you know, that is. Yeah. That uh, this little, what, January, February movie comes out and just, yep. it just tears up the zeitgeist. It eats, you know, everything in its yeah. path it was crazy yeah without a doubt and it's just you know i mean it, what, what what's interesting is it's, it's been kind of like the whole ripple effect because you also have the remake of candy man coming out um you know that jordan peele you know is the producer of jordan peele as many of you know is also the producer uh one of the producers of the hbo the new hbo series lovecraft country yeah um, i started that yesterday he has yeah, another one doesn't yeah. he um on yeah what's his other What's show that? he has another show too right that he produces he has, uh, I think the twilight, uh, the twilight Zone, yeah well right? yeah he hosts twilight and i think well, produces yeah. as well and then he has another one on one of the on like stars or something like that um yeah yeah that's right with al pacino yeah. right yeah so he's oh the, the hunters the, isn't the, that the, produced the, by peel Oh, I think it might be. Yeah. Yeah. I think it might be. So I think he's it might all be, yeah. over the place. You know, it's like I feel like when this movie came out, the the system at large, all the different 
powers that be that give you know you the ability to produce things were like oh he has an eye not just for the filmmaking but for what to choose yeah you know because yeah. it, it put it put new ideas into the mainstream so like i rochelle mentioned up top i have this is my first time watching this movie uh, I missed the train when it was in the station, but uh, I do know oh, basically what it's about. Station. It's yeah. been impossible not to kind of have it spoiled for me. Uh, right. I didn't know exactly how things were going to go down in the film, but I did know the basic premise of the the like doppelgangers. Uh, so immediately I was like on the lookout for all the weird things that were going to happen, but I didn't know how it was going to play out. So that was all very new right. to me still right right yeah i mean it, it's um you know it it i think that it's uh it makes sense that it got the oscar for best screenplay because on one hand it uses like the tropes of horror films very very well you know I and mean, it really like borrows from the tropes of horror, horror films as it, you know, um, uh, but at the same time, it goes in a direction, uh, you know, that horror films traditionally have not gone in. And that's really, you know, talking about race from, you know, a perspective that's kind of casual. It's like on the surface, you know, like the casual race, yeah. but also, uh, its use of racism as a metaphor yeah. um, is something that, you know, I, you know, I never seen um, to that level, uh, done to that level and, and with that much craft. Yeah. Um, Cause know, it's I, so it's, all about that. And yet, yeah. yeah and yet it's, it's not in a way that detract, it, it, it just enhances it. You know, it's like all elements yeah. are bent towards this and it's so in your face in a way that it's not in a lot of movies. Uh, yeah, because yeah. you think because you think that it's like because you know it 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 present it, pre it presents these situations that you recognize, you know what I'm saying, and and it and it and it does it so casually, um, uh, you know, in the beginning with the relationship like between Daniel Kaluuya's character, um, you know, and the and the um. The white woman from Girls. What's her name? Is it Emily something? I forget. Oh uh, yeah, I was gonna go down the cast list, and but oh, we've yeah, gotten, yeah. but we got into it, and it's fine. Uh, what's yeah. oh, I have her name right here? Uh, Allison Williams, right? Allison the girlfriend. Williams. Yeah, Allison Williams. Oof, but it's Rose like their is relationship is so is so it's so casual and chill, and it feels very real. Just the whole idea that she wouldn't have told you know, her parents that he's black and, and that they can joke about it and that they have chemistry, you know what I'm saying? And you, you know, you, the, the whole situation is about a, a voting for Obama for a third term. If they could, it's all stuff yeah. that like, okay, yeah, makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we're still seeing the conflict and you know, something's coming, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But you just don't know how deep it's going to go when it actually kind of hits you. Yeah. And I think that's that's one of the uh, that's one of the genius qualities and one of the brilliant qualities about the film, you know, in my opinion. Um, so it's really, really good, you know, uh, you know, on that level. I, I wanted to and, ask, did you uh, how familiar were either of you guys with Jordan Peele before Get Out? Like, were you guys fans of Key and Peele or big fan? Yeah, big yeah, fan. yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So was Definitely. this movie? So on that note, like, because I also liked Kim Peel a lot. I thought it was a really well made show. Um, were you surprised because of that, or did it make a lot of sense? What you? To me, it made a lot of sense. I'm a huge fan. They, uh, what I always forget his first name, but those two Jordan Peel, Keegan, Keegan Michael Key, and Jordan, Jordan Peel, the yeah. other one, the other Keegan one. Keegan Michael Key, Keegan Michael Key, Keegan, Keegan Michael Key, and Jordan Peel. They originally like bonded over horror as far as I have found out and so um for me it wasn't unnatural to see Jordan Peele take this leap and clearly they're geniuses as far as Key and Peele so why wouldn't that be able to trans over, translate over into something more dramatic like writing sketch and such is fucking hard so no I kidding. think that it's huh yeah no kidding it's mm -hmm. the fucking hardest thing 
So like being a and they did made a lot of gems. So being able to just kind of like jump into this other genre is not uh, wasn't surprising to me. But what is surprising is how then he just kind of branched off everywhere. Like you guys were, yeah, we were just discussing. Uh, this that surprise. This movie when it yeah. came out, I'm really surprised to see. It. It's mostly because I don't like horror because I don't like being scared. <laughs> um, but like I was really excited when this movie came out actually because I felt like for a long time that Jordan Peele's kind of the brains behind the operation of Keem Peele mm-hmm. in just like yeah. the in in both the writing and in the production. Mm-hmm. Like on the production end of things, Keem Peele is so well produced. Like when you go back and look at the it's like yeah. it's cinema mm-hmm. quality for the dumbest sketch in the world, you know? Like just mm-hmm. the two guys on the street talking about Liam Neeson looks the, the, amazing. Like I got the zombie extra ones. I have to give that one a shout out because we did all the zombie movies last <laughs> two weeks. Yeah, we no did a couple doubt. zombie movies, uh, no and we doubt. also did. Uh, you mentioned earlier we did Sorry to Bother You, which uh, oh, okay. which has a little crossover with this film. Uh, Lakeith yeah. Stanfield, Lakeith. who's yeah. great. Yeah. I am now a fan. If I yeah, wasn't before, I liked him on Atlanta, and then I really liked him. Sorry to bother you, but in this one, this, it, uh, he's like this he's so one different. Made me a fan too, John. Yeah, this, it made yeah. me a fan of him too, and yeah. also uh, Little Ray Howry. Oh, Little Rel, yeah, 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 yeah. Little Rel, no, he, yeah, yeah. No, he's awesome. He's so funny. Oh, and yeah. this kind of me, no, he got. I think he's he the friend on the phone, right? Deal deal after this. What's that? He's the friend on the phone, right? He's yeah, he's amazing. Yeah. He's, he's amazing. A, he's yeah. A TSA, yeah, he's a TSA agent. You know, like, they did a film, uh, you know, Kim Phil did a film called Keanu. Um, I saw that. That came out, like, a year or two before, you know, Get Out. So I didn't really know. And, and Keanu was not that great of a movie. No, You know, because really. it was kind of like both of them were in it. Um, it was I one sketch bit after another. And it was like. Yeah, it was kind of, it was, it was kind of like an extension of the Kim Peel skits. Yeah, but it wasn't that great, you know. And even and even Peel, you know, talks about how he wished that he had an opportunity to write more drafts of the script before they shot it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it definitely had some moments of like, you know, some great humor, but it wasn't as well crafted. And so, like, when I when I'm I was a little bit surprised. I'm like walking into the theater to see Get Out. I kind of I kind of didn't really know like what to expect, although I knew it was going to be different. You know what I'm saying? And so I was like, okay, let's see what it is. But it's like from watching Keen Peel, it's like, you know, Peel is obviously just like a master at genre. Yeah. Like he just knows genre so, so well. And so he just, and he just, yeah, he's tried it in the, in the seven seasons or whatever they had. It was like, he tried to stomach at everything, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and it's like they've been doing it. I mean, the thing is, too, they, they, they've been doing it for a while because, you know, they started off together on Mad TV. And he almost, and I, did, I was they? reading about him the other day, he was almost, uh, he almost made the cut to be in Saturday Night Live because his Obama impersonation was so good that he was almost cast, you know. Just you for know, that. The, yeah, just for that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he was rejected. If you have like a good that, modern political impression, you've got steady work on SNL. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, look, yeah, exactly, exactly. If you can, especially these if you days. can work that out. And his, yeah, his Obama was really, really good. Like when he gives the when he gives the dap, when he gives the handshake, yes. you know, and that I mean, that was amazing. You know what I'm saying? It was amazing. But, have have I mean, you guys seen the epic rap battles of history with him and Keegan Michael Key? Yeah, with where Gandhi they do, um, and Obama and Gandhi. No, no. Michael Jordan. Whoa, hi guys. Yeah. I woke up not too long ago. Yeah, ML- <laughs> MLK. <laughs> um, uh, Gandhi and Martin Luther King. Wow. Have you guys seen? Yeah, that I one's didn't great. See that one. He, it's... Jordan Peele plays Martin Luther King. Yeah, and oh it's God. hilarious. Everyone, wow. please. He's got Obama the look for Obama. Martin Luther more than he does for Obama too, because he's yeah, got he that does. thicker kind of set exactly <laughs> he's, exactly he's great uh yeah acting in this movie was great yeah the, all the yeah. the the help right who i was the whole movie i was like what is their deal because i was like okay they're not who they're supposed yeah. to be but when right. it, when you find out that it's the parents it makes so much yeah. sense and it does it's and like the acting very like really clicked for me where I was like, oh, they are doing such good old people, like old yeah. white people jobs where like, 
new body, but I st- I'm still old. You know, I right. still got that like right. feeling of, and just and no, I just come from an archaic perspective well, to like, boot. See, and, and it's like the woman, um, the woman. I think her name is uh, Michelle Gabriel, who plays uh, the 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 maid and Betty Gabriel. Was it? What's it? What is it? Betty Gabriel. Sorry, yeah, Betty Gabriel. She, uh, thank you. She, um, you know, she does, she has all these kind of like little bits of activity, you know, during the course of like looking at herself in the mirror and kind of, you know, or in the window, which kind of serves as a mirror, yeah. kind of admiring herself, you know, and stuff like that. And just kind of the way she stands in the kitchen, like just her whole, her posture and the way that she kind of stands, you know, it's very, mm-hmm. It's very kind of old. It's very kind of Stepford Wives, you know what I'm saying? Like almost yeah. like a robot. Even like yeah. the jump scare before he goes out to take a smoke and stuff like that, when she's walking across is like almost kind of like robotic. Yeah. You know what I mean? This oh, yeah. film has huge Stepford Wives vibes. Yeah, to yeah. It. yeah. <laughs> you know what this really reminds me of is, I mean, it wasn't the best movie in the world, but with Kate Hudson's Skeleton Key. Do you, have you guys seen that? Mm. I know. She, um, she, lives in new orleans and she ends up she's a nurse and she ends up taking a job out i don't know in the bayou i don't know i'm sorry i don't know anything about living out there (laughs) um moves into this house to help take care of a bedridden elderly man and it's a very similar situation in that there are people in those people's bodies that aren't there originally and now they're hunting hers because they want her body gotcha very yeah <laughs> it, was, it was voodoo is that a recommend is that um once uh, more uh, yeah maybe <laughs> you know it's it's, it's 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 the pandemic so it's like if you run out of stuff you know there's what always else? something else yeah there's you yeah you, you, might watch well some skeleton key. you might as well check yeah. it out you know what you I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's real. You know so uh, there was something interesting I, I found watching this movie now, uh, uh-huh. and it's that it came out in 2017, right? Yeah. When was mm-hmm. this movie? So that means that means Trump was already president, right? But it doesn't yeah. feel like there's right. 20- well, that's what he takes office in 2017. in 2017, right? So he just yeah. just stepped in. So I was like, this movie would probably have a number of very different interactions were it written today for like Trump's America, because it's clearly a post Obama movie, right? Yeah. Is that I would have voted for him a third time, right? But yeah. like, they don't get the opportunity to really address sort of the modern institution yeah. which is it seems like a missed opportunity well you know part of part of you know he 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 has an alternate ending you know for the movie and in the alternate ending chris ends up going to prison and ends up getting you know uh put to death you yeah know what I'm saying for killing uh the girlfriend you know what i'm saying and but but and like like it's the cop from earlier in the movie who steps out of the car or something right like, right, that's, right. I mean, yeah. That you makes know what I'm saying? I mean, that, that's what Angie goes That scene, I thought that's where it was going for sure. It definitely... I did too. It definitely that, pushes you there. It's like... Yeah. yeah. All, it pushes you all the way there. And I right. had forgotten in the moment, I'd forgotten about the friend and all that. So, like, good right. setup, but, like, it it sends you there anyway. I think that's why they didn't need to film it that way. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think it was... Ref- it's the movies. So in reality, let's if this were to happen, we know what to, were to yeah. really happen. So I love that they right. sent you. Yeah, that, 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 that was his did. point. I think his point was like, yeah. you know, I could I can kind of do like the super duper kind of woke ending, you know. But but he also kind of wanted to kind of give people something different, you know. Um, especially because too, it's like you know, so much of the film, so much of him talking about the film is about representation. You know, it was about the whole idea that, you know, um, the existence of this film is having a conversation with our other horror films where the black characters don't make it, you know, to the end where they die. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, we've you know, seen that movie, right? We've seen that movie several, 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 several times. Yeah. I mean, you know, 
yeah. ever since uh, Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, I was going to say, it day. was like, it was something monumentous and and ground-shaking with Night of the Living Dead, but now it's it's exhausting, yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, because it's just like, you know, it's 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 like, you know, you, you, you never give those characters a chance, you know, to really, you know, do what they do. And, it, and even like in, in Living Color, you know, which was uh, kind of like a, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, an ancestor or whatever of of of, uh, of both the Chappelle show and Key and Peele. They used to do those skits about like the black character that always dies before the end of like, you know, the movie, you know, where like the where the white character is centered. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like um, all just and so it's cool that, away. you know, yeah. You know, what I mean, so it's like it's cool that um, that he did, he did it differently, but I think like what we showed saying, he he thought about that. He's like, look, you know, what I'm saying we're in a situation where, you know, why do you why does it have to be a downing a down ending, you know, a tragic yeah. ending, you know, just because, you Cause know, because he he doesn't be strike reality. me as a pessimistic guy, yeah, like, right, yeah, and no. it seems like it would be not his style to have it be completely pessimistic, right? He's right. just he's just so upbeat. And mm -hmm. he seems to have like, and he just has this like very wide perspective that I think yep. he's very smart in the way that, that he presents yeah. things to people. Cause, uh, cause he's half, he's half white, right? Him and, half him white, and yeah. Keegan Peel. So they, they have this like very unique taste of both worlds, uh, yes. that they, yes. that they've done, a, I think, and particularly Jordan Peel in this case has done a very good job of bringing to the screen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the him and his friend are so likable and the girlfriend seems at first like she can fit fit right into like their little, you know, their little frame, their universe. Mm -hmm. But yep. she's yep. just, oh man, that character, that is the most wicked character. Can we talk about her perfect. for a minute? Cause she, perfect. Yeah, perfect. that phone conversation that the friend has with her. Where, oh, yeah. where he, oh, where yeah. she like flips it on him is such right. a good scene, and I love the shot on her where like she's in her new look, right? She's all yeah, done up. Yeah, yeah. She's in her yep. post boyfriend look, her true yep. self, and she's just like dead faced doing this yeah. whole thing. I thought that was a really nice choice. Uh, there was an interview I was reading with Jordan Peele, and he said that her character, um he wanted her to be like a girl next door type. And when he met Allison, he said that she was like very someone you had a crush on, you know, like at summer camp. Yeah. And um, he loved bringing that into like juxtaposing it against that, like sinister cold list. Like where does her soul go? And like seeing the difference between her full of like this wholesome kind soul to this yeah. like monster. It was wow. Wow. Yeah. Well done. Well done, Allison Williams. Well done. Yeah. Right. And it's like, you know, it, it's, and it's like, it, as a, as a, as a piece of writing, it's like, you know, you, you, you often, you know, you know, characters are kind of like onions, you know, where you kind of present, you know, the whole onion with the, with, you know, with the almost wax paper skin, you know, over it in the beginning of the movie. And during the course of the movie, you can peel away the layers until you get to like the core, you yeah. know, of who the character is. And so it was just like really, you know, really interesting how we kind of, you know, she, she has this mask on for the majority of the film. And then there's that great scene where like, you know, we see, uh, you know, Chris, Daniel Kaluuya's character is like, you know, telling me, it's like, give me the damn keys. It's so intense. And, Let's and see. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, boom. It's like, Oh, shit, I remember I was in the theater. I was like, yo, what's up with the keys? I said, there must be something up. Then she like said, then she holds them up. I'm like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what's gonna happen now? Once he saw the pictures, though, he should have known he was never yeah. getting those keys. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, True. Yeah. yeah exactly. Like he just yeah. wanted it out in the open to some extent. He just like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me I'm not crazy. Either give me some keys to get out right. of here, or show me your right. real self. Right. And that's kind of like that kind of classic, you know, kind of horror trope that's like in Rosemary's Baby, like the whole idea of like this kind of paranoia. Mm. And, you know, and you wonder, I mean, it, 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 it you know, it's kind another, of skeptical another, in our own surroundings. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're being kind of gaslit and we ask ourselves the question, like, you know, who's, who's the one who's crazy? You know what I'm saying? Is it, is it us who's crazy or is it the people that I'm dealing with who are crazy? And I think that, you know, 
what's really, really cool, too, is that, like, you know, as, you know, a black person is an African-American, you know, you, you know, especially in situations where you're dealing with racism, whether it be casual, you know, or kind of more directly systemic, it's like these are the questions that you're kind of asking yourself. Like, is this real? You know what I'm saying? Am I, like, you know, am yeah. I being too sensitive in this moment? You know what I'm saying? Or is it a situation where, like, you know, these people, you know, are as messed up or whatever, you know, as they seem to be based on what their actions are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he so lets that, that kind of, he lets that gaslighting lead him almost to his doom, right? Yeah, without a doubt. Like he yeah, follows yeah, it all the doubt. way there, because it's right. just like, no, it can't be that bad. It, they're just mm-hmm. they're just regular folks. Like it can't be yeah. that bad. And it's just like I remember it was well before we we get. Um, the key Stanfield's like break out, but like there was yeah. a moment in the movie where I yelled at the screen. I was like, get out. <laughs> get, get out. Exactly. I just was like, Oh, this movie's so yeah. well named. I was just like, right no, right. no, yeah. not now. And it's like, that's, I mean, look, and it's like, that's the whole point. Cause you know, the, the, the film, uh, he got like the title he, of the uh, film from the Am- 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 Amityville horror line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just, where it's like, we need to get out. It's the, it's the most I mean, appropriate name for this movie. Cause I like, when you meet the brother, it's like, no, get out, get out. Like, yeah, just yeah, 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 don't yeah, exactly go right. any further. Like he starts getting these warning signs, like right, right away when the dad has the talk to him about the, the staff, that's when yep. I was like, Oh, that's good. That's the first get out. Like yeah. really oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you've, you've yeah. given it enough. You've been a decent person. You met them and they're right. making it super awkward. Maybe get out. The brother like, is like, out. You yeah. have now. You have an excuse. You can be like, "No, your brother yeah. makes me freaking nervous. I think he's gonna yeah. attack me." <laughs> but it's all that. But but we're 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 kind of seduced because it's like that's the we accept that that's the that's the casual nature of those microaggressions that we kind of always face. Exactly. It's like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like you know, it's it's the you know, it's he's it, learned it, to it, brush it, it off so, so much, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like yeah, it's like it, it's stuff that we normally you know experience, but is kind of brushed off. And so on one hand, it's like, he's like, I want to get the fuck out. But on the other hand, you know what I'm saying? He's like, yo, I just, I just have to kind of like swallow this because my girlfriend is here yeah. and I want to make a good impression. You know what I'm saying? And the real life consequence would be that your girlfriend probably breaks up with you or at least you get into a big fight over it. And it's like a thing right. that hangs over your relationship with her parents. Right. You know, you want to like. I understand the the desire to be like we gotta dodge all that. If you really yep. like this girl, like let's just make it cool and right. get through it. Oh. Yeah, and, and the whole know, time she's, she's the just the worst. Too, oh. She's the one who admits she she kind of admits like you know she kind of plays the role. She's like, yeah, my parents are racist. They're fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I can't believe they said that to you. You know what I mean? You know yeah. after the whole thing, and you know she's the one who goes and talks to um you know uh uh you know betty gabriel after betty gabriel disconnects his phone from the power you know what i'm saying and so she plays the role of the ally very very well you know what i'm saying until it's time you know to kind of like you know turn it around you know what i'm saying yeah. um but it's like you know it's it, it's like it's like jordan peele it's like he wants he wants to put us into that that situation to the audience where we participate so it's like, you know, he wants to put us in that situation where it's just like, you know, um, uh, when we're yelling at the screen, like, you know, when when uh, right before she like throws him right before the mother, uh, Catherine McKenna throws him into the sunken place. You know, we're like, yo, get up out of that chair, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm Do it like, right yeah, now. Yeah. Right like now. It's about to get, before you know before it's, it's too late. To crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's about it to got way crazier uh, during that bit than I expected. Cause I was like, it's still pretty early in the movie, you yeah. know, and like, oh yeah. shit, we're going, we're going literally deep, yeah, <laughs> going all, yeah. all the way there. Yeah, yeah cause, right, because you wonder, you wonder when the movie is gonna start. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's really gonna start, you know, and it, and it and it starts. It kind of starts like when they're at the, um, when they're on the table at, on the deck in the back. When they kind of when they say, look, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, we can we can. Um, yeah. When they start getting him on about the cigarettes, right? Yeah. About the cigarettes. Exactly. Exactly. He's like, no, 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 I'm good. You know what I'm saying? And then wakes up. Boom. You know, goes out and smokes. And then she's like, you know, sit down, come and talk to me. I'm like, oh, shit. 
You know what I'm saying? It's about to go down. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's about to go down. But it's like that thing. It's like, you know, it's like Jordan Peele. You know, it's like, you know, it, 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 it's that situation where it's like always like we're always yelling at the screen, telling characters not to be dumb. Yeah. You, know what I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, yo, like, get up. You know what I'm saying? Like, get out of there. And, when, uh, when, and he wants that. When his old when his old friend or his old acquaintance played by like Keith Stanfield straight up attacks him from the photo, which rookie yeah. rookie move on the flash there. But right. who you right, right. <laughs> right. Especially when you're trying to be like sneaky about it. Rookie move. But like I thought he was taking a video the first time I watched it. Side note. So when his flash went off, I was like amateur for taking a picture, first of all. You take a video these days. Right. <laughs> right and you get his right. weird talking and his weird mannerisms right yeah. you're like yeah. this is weird right and then the flash went off and i was like fine like i guess i'll accept this but when right, right, right. so but then his friend didn't have the pro- the appropriate information because he didn't he told him that he was talking weird but what he needed to be was like he's weird and this motherfucker straight up attacked me and screamed at me like right. there's no way you don't get a, like the fact that he stays yeah. past that is it's, yeah. you're just why yeah. I like it had me screaming yeah that's, especially when that's when he recognized him yeah, yeah he's yeah, like yeah. holy shit it was him right, <laughs> yeah. exactly exactly no nah, it's crazy I mean I, I and, you know you see it multiple times you can see you can see that that was kind of like the device it's like how do you how do you like there's already a situation in the story right where you see the characters, you know, you see the, the, the maid, you know, um, you know, Betty Gabriel, you see, you know, the, the, the father, you know, who, you know, who lost Jesse Owens. It's like, there, there are a couple of moments where you see them kind of fighting against themselves. I mean, the main, that main moment is when the tear comes out, Betty Gabriel's eye, right? And she's like, no, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? But you kind of, you know, you, you, you see that. Yeah, they're and it's fighting. All, and, it, and it's almost like, a, yeah, you know what I mean? It's almost like a little metaphor for, like, you know, what he's dealing with. Like, you know, trying to kind of fight, kind of deal with that kind of double consciousness, you know, that he has. And trying to figure out, like, when exactly he makes his move. But it's like, you know, it's like a situation where, like, you know, he, by the time he makes his move, it's just, it's too late. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He gets hemmed up. You know what I mean? What, what, you know, on your first kind of viewing of it, what, what, what surprised you the most? I mean, what kind of struck you and what, what do you feel surprised you? I, I think it was the fact that he managed to get himself out. Uh, the, yeah. like I, I, I thought the friend was going to have more to do with rescuing him as mm-hmm. I was, as I was watching it. And then he goes to the police station. They're like laughing him out of the, <laughs> out yeah, of the police station. Yeah. Which was, you know, uh, a, a funny scene, but also one of those scenes where you're like, you know, why would they believe him? You know? <laughs> like, right, right, right. Like, I can't, right. I have a hard time uh, saying that, like, that's totally unrealistic <laughs> of a, right, of a right. manner that they'd have toward him. Just like, who is this guy right. wasting our time? But I thought he would have more to do with it. and And then he, like, gets himself out of the trouble and just, like, and yeah. when, he, when he took them all down, I was very, I was very pleasantly surprised because they all had it coming. <laughs> like yeah, they were, yeah, yeah, yeah. they were all I, bad news, all kinds of bad. I right. want to comment on that moment where they were the detectives were laughing at him. I thought it was saying a lot because he, all the detectives were people of color, and he was telling them about this like white girl that is possibly causing his really good friend all these issues, and they're like laughing why because at the end of the day who's gonna win and like, i think yeah what are we gonna do go into this highbrow white like, community and... yeah, yeah, yeah right <laughs> yeah so I, thought that, right. I thought although funny it was a very pointative uh moment in the film and really yeah. shows just yeah. how deep this racial absolutely yeah because uh, you because you think about you it makes you start thinking about like if you just tweaked a few of those circumstances. Like on one level his story is a little bit crazy cuz he's talking about hypnotizing people, right? Yeah. But on the other end it's like you know, if if my white friend went into the black community and didn't come back, 
we're not going to search for him. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. you yeah. know, they just right. like, yeah, nothing bad. So it definitely takes, it took me there. You know, I, I, I definitely couldn't kind of not be taken there <laughs> by the film. Right. It was definitely an interesting mm-hmm. thing. I think the, the film also does a really good job on just a nuts and bolts level of setups and payoffs throughout yeah, the movie. Yeah, yeah. It does like yeah. it, I, most scenes are doing double duty on that level. Uh, like that scene in particular, I feel like is kind of, it's doing like three things at once. It's like comedic relief in an otherwise really mm-hmm. tense movie, you know, it's social commentary and it's also yeah. like reminding you that the friend is out there trying to, to do something for him. And then we get to like, forget about him, but that setup is really strong. And yeah. like, there were a lot of good little setups The the one where he does escape the cotton, I thought yeah. was a really clever. And I love anytime a hero gets themselves out of a situation through their wits. I think it's one of yeah. my favorite like story tropes, if you will, that, yeah. that they have. <laughs> yeah. No, cause it's like, you know, it, it, it's like the, you know, he, he, I think one of the kind of like the prime directives, you know, that that Jordan Peele wanted to adhere to is making sure that he gave his protagonist agency, you know, and it's like, you know, you give one way to do it is by like you were saying, John, it's like, you know, it 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 it's like, you know, have the 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 friend pull up onto, you know, the, the you know, the, to the house and kind of like, you know, do his TSA thing, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But but that that might take a little bit away, you know, from the agency of the protagonist, you know, yeah, the main character. You know what I'm saying? And so by kind of having that, having the protagonist, um, you know, kind of take action and almost get themselves out, you know what I'm saying? Like not quite, almost get themselves out is um, you know, is 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 good storytelling, you know what I'm saying, in that way. Cause it's like if the friend comes in, if the friend comes in earlier it's almost like Deus Ex Machina. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's almost like, you know, the, the, the character. Yeah. You know, what has he then done for himself? Like what all is, he did, yeah. yeah all he, he did was not walk away when he should have at that point. He, exactly. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, you know, he, you know, we get to the point where we don't know that, you know, the, 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 we cast doubt on his ability to be successful when we see that he's really, really close to getting, you know, hemmed up, you know what I'm saying? Get his yeah. brain taken out. It's like, you know, it's like Bradley Woodford's character has already started to like perform the surgery to take out the brain from the white dude in preparation yeah. to, you know, to take, you know, Chris's Talking brain Talking about out. cutting it close. Yeah, right. Exactly, A close shave. Right? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But it's like he kind of gets out and, and uh, you know, and, you know, and how interesting too that it's like, you know, that he – puts cotton in his ears you know what I, I'm saying? Oh. I would not have thought of that I thought it was very clever it was well mm-hmm. set up from the gouging shots that we had like a lot of those of him tearing it up uh, yeah and it was just like oh that makes a lot of sense it's mm-hmm. something you could in theory figure out but I yep. you know I didn't think of it and so I always yeah. like when a movie can kind of get ahead of me a little bit yeah yeah and kind of surprise you like yeah. I like like even like the way that he, when he stabs uh, Bradley Whitford's character with the with the with the um, you know with the, oh with, with the, the antlers <laughs> with the antlers yeah that was like you know what I'm saying it's like you that know that was so metal it was so amazing <laughs> yeah I mean it's just like you know I was just I like was oh Operation it. Done like yeah. he's right. he's put a stop to it first thing I thought that was really satisfying it left me in a place where like no matter what happens at least like no one else is gonna be transplanting their brains with this guy like at the right. very least right. he has stopped the core problem right off the bat so like everything right. else was kind of gravy uh, right and i didn't i i don't think i expected it to go so wrong after that point also where yeah. she almost she almost wins man yeah. <laughs> like, no yeah, yeah no exactly well it's like you know i mean it, again and it, it, it uses like the horror tropes really really well like when the brother comes back and you know, like you think the brother is yeah. dead, you see the blood, you know, the pool yeah, of head blood wound like head. that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like like he when he gets hit by the bocce ball, right? And then like he's about to he's about to get out of the house, and then boom, the brother comes back. And and what's interesting is that he, you know he puts that sleeper hold on him. Yeah, the same sleeper hold that he put on the Keith Stanfield earlier in the film. Yeah. So again, it's like you're wondering, oh shit, like is this gonna be? 
you know, is this it? You know, is he going to get hemmed up? You know, there's that, that, there's that great, you know, yeah. kind and he'd of, been uh, talking a lot about his jujitsu and whatnot. I, yeah, exactly. I thought, I thought at that moment that he was going to pull like a judo move. Uh, yeah. even though, but I, but part of my brain was also like, no, he's not because they didn't really set up that he knows judo. They, he like took it. Right. He had fun with it. Right. Uh, but part of me did go back to that conversation with, with the brother because I'm like, oh, it's these two guys fighting. And they had that whole like the fight conversation. conversation, but I liked how he, he, he used the predictive nature of his leg going right. Up. And I was like, oh, that's really, yeah, and, that was and, another and, really clever move that he uses to get out. Yeah. Well, and it's just like, you, you know, the, the action scene was just kind of done really well because he keeps on trying to open the door and then the door is being shut. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he keeps on being shut. You're like, oh, snap. How's it going to go down? You know what I'm saying? And yeah. so it's like, it's, and, and, then he, and then he works it out. And what's so interesting, too, is that, like, you know, there's this whole, um, there's this whole thing in, in horror movies and other films, uh, you know, that when, that when you see people drinking milk, that usually means that that character kind of embodies evil. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, you know, you see, you see, uh, you know, Allison's character, who, you know, she's drinking milk, uh, and then she's eating the Fruit Loops kind of like, you know, one after the other, as opposed to like eating it, like, you know, just whole. Mm. And, um, and it's just like, and it goes back to what John was saying, just about that, like, you know, she's just that, she's into her just evil self. Like, this is just how she's getting down. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. It's, 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 it's deep. You know I found saying? myself wondering how many other successful transplants were walking around. Cause we see the one guy who's like on display as right. a successful demonstration. So like maybe he's the only one, but maybe. No, I maybe don't know. The... No, cause they, she had all those victims and the photos. And yeah. The she had all those pictures. And, you know what I'm saying? Were there, cause a lot of them woman. were the, the grandfather character. Right. And then. There was two of them that were the grandfather and the grandmother, and then there was Lakeith Stanfield's right. character. And I think part of that is because he was the newest one. So they possibly like keep them yeah. around to make sure everything goes well for a bit and then yeah. work it out. integrate into society. Yeah, well, they lure him out in different ways, clearly, because Lakeith got like, you know, got taken yeah. out from behind by the brother, I'm guessing. Right. Right <laughs> in the beginning, yeah. Because they even yeah. mentioned that his methods are less, less savory or whatever. He's right. just yeah. he's right. just a maniac. You know, the brother's exactly. just a maniac. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they've kind of got he's on also, a leash. He, he he he's a similar character. Not not well, not exactly similar, but like you know, he has that same kind of like um, swagger to him. And uh, you know, uh, three billboards. Uh, you know, three billboards in Ebbing, Ebbing's Missouri film. Uh, um, you know, about uh, what's her name from Fargo. France McDormand. Who, uh, yeah, France McDormand, who's trying to um, find out what happened to her daughter who was killed. And he's in that movie, too, a, a different character. But that same kind of sense of mystery and kind of hidden charisma and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, what's interesting, too, is that, like, you know, I mean, because the film, you know, has so many layers to it, um, it, it rewards kind of like multiple, multiple viewings. And so, you know, yeah. I, I watched it again recently just to kind of like, you know, prepare to have this conversation. And I didn't realize that the guy who kidnaps the Keith Stanfield in the opening of the movie, um, that that is the brother. Yeah. Cause it's the same, it's the same car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, uh, it's the same. It's a quick it's a, plant. It, yeah, like that scene. It's a kind quick of, plant. Yeah. yeah, it's like one of those things that's definitely kind of like, you know, I mean, it's it's hard to, I didn't get that, definitely get that from the first viewing yeah. or even the second viewing, but also that, you know, the script, um, the script was, um, you know, he, you know, he wrote, originally wrote a draft of the script, a separate draft of the script in 2009. Um, and then when Trayvon Martin, you know, happened, he, that's when he decided to write the Lakeith Stanfield scene where Lakeith gets kidnapped. Oh, wow. You know, to kind of mirror, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, the Trayvon Martin thing where you kind of have, you know, this, this you know, young black guy, you know, being yeah. profiled in this in this predominantly white neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? And so there's like little, there's all these, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it, that opening scene sets the tone uh, mm -hmm. kind of perfectly, right? 
it's just yeah. immediately like we're 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 following a black guy so like that's mm-hmm. our our viewpoint and mm-hmm. he's just immediately it feels sketchy and haunting and like yep. you can feel how scary it is and when that car pulls up on him that is some some shady yeah exactly some shady because business like right exactly you, know, you don't know what it could be it could be someone just here to harass you but like right. i think he has the right idea right he's like oh i'm gonna get out of this situation right like, exactly right. <laughs> but just he just doesn't it just, he's like you know he's like 30 seconds too late you know what i'm saying yeah. as soon as he you know as soon as he uh you know uh as soon as that car did that u-turn it's like i'm gone yeah you know what I'm saying? like i'm like you know I'm calling my girl or whatever. I'm like, look, I'm being chased by this car. Look, but I feel like, like he know. did it again the socially appropriate way. Like, right? Like he he just kept to yeah. his business and then he stopped and he tried. He waved at the guy to be like, yeah. hello. Like, if you're gonna yep. talk to me, this is the opportunity. Right. And and when not, it's like, yeah, smart. Like, yeah. But yeah, just still again, I kind of caught in that same idea of just like trying to do the the socially correct thing, yeah, you know, yeah. be careful. Yep. And it's just like, no, it's trying to kill you. <laughs> it's, <laughs> right. Like, and it's like, yeah, exactly. It's like, yo, am I crazy? Like who's the crazy one? You know what I'm saying? And, and what's so cool too, is that, you know, they, he, he throws in a little um, reference to the shining in that opening scene when, um, when Keith Stanfield is like, this is this, you know, he gets off the phone with his girl. And he's like, this is kind of, this, this this whole joint. It's like a hedge maze. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Kind of taking us back to that, like you know, big scene from The Shining. And so just like all these little, you know, um, these little things in it. And also just like you know, the first three songs in the movie that we hear are the music's uh, great. The also, music's yeah. great. They're all they're all warnings. You know what I'm mm. saying? Mm-hmm. You know from. From what the, is that song from the song. credit? Yeah, what is that song from the credits? That thing is haunting. Childish Gambino, no. And uh, well, yeah, well, the, there's the Redbone song, and that's in the apartment. Oh. That's the Childish Gambino song when you know that when, when you know when the um the, the course, yeah, like, during the opening vote. credits, it's just like this yeah, really haunting. It's, it's just, yeah, it's like, a Swahili song. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. That was created by the composer, and Great. you know that's also a warning. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like in Swahili, they're saying like, run, watch your back, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. You know what oh, I'm wow. saying? That's so cool. it's like if you're a Swahili, it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> but yeah, but I, I but I, it, it, that scene, that opening scene with Lakeith Stanfield is so important. Yeah. Because it's like without that scene, if that scene is not there, then, you know, uh, the opening of the film becomes too casual. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's true. Like you don't really and it adds danger. also when we see him again later, we immediately like we don't have all the answers, but we know that's not right. Like, yeah, we, you exactly. know, it's it's this huge blaring sign that's like to the to us, right. the audience, you know, we're privileged to that. But, you know, the idea that he recognizes him, <laughs> it's like, yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. yeah. That, exactly. that that should then give him the same exact alert that it gave us. That, like this is right, right, exactly, I, exactly. Yeah. And I think too, it's like you know, um, it's a good point you made earlier, just about how there probably are others, you know, many many others that have been kidnapped, you know, by you know this family and been kind of you know taken into the sunken place, and um, and I think that you know having just like one black dude there with Keith Sanfield kind of allows, you know, those interactions to kind of take place that whole, you know, just that whole situation. It's like, you know, when you're, you know, that, that that there's a little bit of a, oftentimes, you know, there's that, there's that wave of discomfort, you know, when you're kind of like, you know, when when you're black and kind of like at one of these, like, you know, white cocktail parties. And it's like, you're kind of like, you know, wondering like, you know, where you can make a connection, you know, depending on who the people are. And he's kind of hoping to make that connection to Lakeith Stanfield, but he can't make it, you know, because he's just not, you know, because yeah. Lakeith is not, he's not who he is. Well, And he keeps he running into that, right? Like, yeah, you know, he thought he's like, okay, maybe the house staff will be real with me. And right. They are not, exactly. they're not exactly. real with him. <laughs> and, right. And right. Like, here's you this know, guy. So. Okay. Finally, someone who's like my age, even though he's dressed really weird. <laughs> right exactly he's got the hat on to hide the scar you know what i'm saying yeah you have a little skull scar and what but it's also there's a, there's a nice plant payoff 
and when he meets the grandfather, you know, when he, you know, and, and, and he tries to make that connection with the grandfather, it's really, really awkward because, you know, because the dude is like, oh, she's quite, you know, she's quite a, uh, you know, uh, she's something. A catch, she? right? You know? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, she's quite a catch. They're like, yo, this is really kind of creepy. You know what I'm saying? And there's no connection. And yet, you know, at the end, after he, after he, you know. Uh, but also, ooh, can I just say ooh? Because, like, yeah, not yeah. only is he grandpa, but he's yeah. in a body that his granddaughter has slept with. Like, yeah. Right, yeah that's going yeah, on in this that- family. <laughs> she lured that boy in. There was a bunch of pictures of them together. Yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. And grandpa said, okay, I'll take that body. So, yep. yeah, ooh. Yeah, that was, yeah, like, yeah, ultra yeah, ooh yeah. when I realized he was, like, put yeah. <laughs> in retrospect. That's a good point. <laughs> Rochelle's like, I'm out. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one is like, ooh. It's yeah, the family yeah. is creepy. They're like Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre creepy. Yeah. Uh, yeah no, but I they got, just I'm... wear nice clothes and live in a nice house. Yeah. Like, yo, I got I got Rosemary's Baby vibes, yo. I got Rosemary's yeah, Baby Yeah, I like the devil worshiping. Yeah, well, it's just like, you know, just yeah, like. Yeah, similar you know, like, cult. Even They've like got in this the weird blocking, like, cabal when he comes going. Out of the house. Yeah. yeah, it's just like, you know. And with their block, how they're standing and whatnot, it's just really kind of like, you know, crazy. Yeah. And how everybody in that party scene is wearing red in uh, one way, shape, or form, whether it be a handkerchief. I like didn't even shirt. notice that. That's you know really what I'm saying? Good. I didn't you know, even notice. It's, yeah, it's, but it's just like all these little, all yeah. these little kind of like moments and Easter eggs. I think about all like of the, the bitters too. Like, mm-hmm. there's so many of them, and they're all, they all know what's going on, right? They've all been brought in. We imagine one by one. Yeah. So it's definitely, and that's very like Rosemary's baby kind of yeah. that yeah. just like that yeah. secret. Everyone are, uh, everyone around me is in on it, but me. Yeah. Right. No, it's exactly. that level of conspiracy that he's surrounded the, by. The silent auction. Oh yeah. 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 And you notice too, that in that silent auction, the, the, the Asian dude, the Japanese dude, he's the only one with the different bingo card. Oh really? Oh, He's got oh, his own bingo card. His bingo card is the same, except for He's the, the one. Dude. He's the one non-white dude. He's the one non-white dude. Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and I, Rosemary's Rosemary's baby because he's, uh, you know, he's uh, there was also that one, you know, Asian dude and Rosemary's baby. Mm. It's you know been a while saying? since I've seen it. Uh, it's probably been a good decade since I saw Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, no, it's been, it's, yeah, no, it's been a minute. That's it's been a wild. Minute. <laughs> um, yeah. and like, I, I loved how the, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was just saying, I loved how the silent auction was held parallel to the scene with, uh, yeah. with the girlfriend. I keep forgetting her name. Um, yeah. Yeah. That back and forth oh. where she's just, you know, she's just trying to hold him there. And like using yeah. every trick in the book, uh, and it's just it's so doubly like cringing. <laughs> what were yeah. you gonna say, Rochelle? No, it's it's um no, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, I just wanted to get back since we are running out of time. I wanted oh, yeah. to talk about that Swahili song real quick, and also a little bit yeah. about Little Rel. Yeah. Um, let's start with the song. Um, one thing that. I noticed in the song is that the there was an English word and it was the word brother. Mm. Um, I thought that was very strategically yep. chosen. Without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. Without a doubt. Um, and as you guys may know, I don't know if the listeners realize yet, but this song was made composed for the film, correct? Yes. Yep. Exactly. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So. Exactly. So it's just like all these warnings you know, uh, you know, underneath it, you know, yeah. um, you know, like in the, in the subtext, you know, like we're, we're, we're clearly getting a very strong and what we believe to be very clear text. We don't Some know. Good composing. Happen. Right. For it's very, yeah. The, the translation, the translation of the lyrics I have right here, it says brother run, listen to the elders, listen to the truth, run away, save yourself. Yep. Exactly. Too bad he didn't speak Swahili. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. Because he would have been he would have been in a better situation. He would have been through less pain as a result. Yeah, you know no what kidding. I'm saying? No, I mean it's real. 
what was so deep too is that like you know um you know one of the kind of like the enduring legacies of the film is that uh you know the whole idea of the sunken place has kind of become a part of like our like cultural lexicon you know um like like you know for example um there was this tweet that kanye west put out uh you know several months ago well, that, well when he when he visited trump in the oval office uh a lot of people would talk about how kanye was like in this in the sunken place you know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? and, right and then and then you know uh kanye tries to combat it by like showing photos of like his mansion or whatever with, with kardashian and he's like y'all does it look like i'm in the second place and people still like dude yeah yeah it's like you know, yeah. <laughs> it does look like that world it doesn't mean that you're not in the sunken place yeah right exactly things have nothing to do with that yeah right exactly <laughs> exactly but it's just you know it's fascinating because you know the the whole idea of the sunken place kind of kind of speaks on many levels and it's like you know on one level you know you have text you have the whole idea that like on the surface this is kind of like a horror movie you know what i'm saying that deals with these, these this family who wants to you know uh take this guy's body you know what I'm saying, and and use it for their own purposes, um, you know, and it's very casual, it's very microaggressive in terms of, you know, how they express the racism, et cetera, et cetera. But then you also, you know, get like the subtext and, you know, and the sunken place, like Jordan Peele talks about how the sunken place is like this metaphor for being marginalized, you know what I'm saying? It's this metaphor for the whole idea that like you're kind of in the room but, you know, you don't have the kind of the agency because, you know, if you're black, you kind of lack that representation. Mm. Um, and, and, he, and, he, and he talks about that, you know, you know, in terms of the horror genre, you know, what I'm saying, which is because of him. It's obviously now it's be, it's begun to change. Yeah. You know, well, I, you know, I never heard the term. Done. I never heard the term social thriller before this movie. And then I started mm. hearing that term thrown around for movies that are coming out, but also somewhat retroactively. And, yeah. and so like, uh, you've got to be a pretty significant piece of cinema to like get new things into the, into yes. the cultural zeitgeist. And it, and this movie yeah. does that on a number of levels. Like you said, with the sunken yeah. place, I feel like, yeah, the, just the idea of the social thriller and that like, you know, Jordan Peele's like, I'm going to do more social thrillers. And it was like, Oh, that's yeah. a, th- thing now and yep. why not like we live yeah. in a social society and there's lots of commentary to be had so right. yeah it makes a lot of sense yeah. uh and, uh, yeah yeah and especially in this moment you know that we're having now in the country i mean it's really um we're kind of seeing a lot of that you know some of the things he was talking about are actually coming to light just in terms of you know you know the fact that you know we can we we can't avoid it now yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, we can't avoid it now. And so it's, well, it's really it's that's, really powerful. Us was very was written in relevancy to what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. No spoilers. Okay. I also haven't seen us yet. So don't spoil it for me. Because I don't know I don't know what the deal is with that one. It's like clones or something. I don't know. Yeah. It's uh I think it's scarier. It's I'm just scary. warning you. Okay. Yeah. I think so. All right. It's more horror. It's more horror. Yeah. I was very tense more... for a lot of this movie. I was very like Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Nah, this, yeah. Nah, it's definitely, I think Us is kind of like more of a genre film than Get Out is. Yeah. And and I think, I think Us, and Us, he actually also doesn't explicitly talk about race, you know, in Us. It's really just like this family, you know, more than anything else. Um, although it's, he does, yeah. Go ahead, Michelle. It's, cl- it's more about class. Yes, yeah. Social mm-hmm. commentary than yes, so much it is. rate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, without a doubt. Without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, we've no, had a no. we've had a fair number of, of good social commentary films yeah. on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh that's uh we've been going for about an hour though, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Uh and I'll say thank you so much for joining us, Randy. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It, pleasure. It was a pleasure. Please come back on. We'd love to have you. Oh, of course, love of course. Well, do we know next oh, week's film? Yeah. Um it's well, it's or do we just have a person? Yeah. I I forgot to get Danielle. it out and look at all of them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We do know. Sorry. Yeah, Danielle and I'm very excited to announce Parasite. 
Oh, yeah. nice. That's yeah. what's up. Talking about yeah. social class. Yeah. Yeah. Talking yeah. about social class. Here, Here we go. go. We love it. We yeah. love. I love. We've been it on anyway. a. We've, yeah, it's Parasite. <laughs> I love Parasite. So I'm excited yeah, to a, watch it's that a, one it's again. A great film. Yeah, it's a great film. So it yeah. should be a lot of fun. Uh, you can follow us on. Uh, at Views and Paradox on Instagram or Twitter if you want updates for the show. We are on iTunes and Spotify getting those episodes up bit by bit. Uh, more will be coming soon. If you're on the YouTube, give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. It'll really help us out. Uh, and until next time, uh, watch more movies. Happy viewing, guys. <laughs> Have a good one. Thanks, guys. Take care.